Shooting USA is brought to you by Hornady Security and the new Ammo Cabinet. Keep your ammunition secure and organized and free up room in your gun safe with the modular Ammo Cabinet by Hornady Security. Welcome again to the Shooting USA YouTube channel. We're glad you're here. You may have noticed that there are billboards and commercials for companies that support Shooting USA as opposed to allowing YouTube to insert company commercials for brands that aren't related to the firearms industry. It's important that we support those that support our Second Amendment rights. Now, here's the content. It is the shooting sport that is as simple as it is difficult. How fast can you draw and shoot five steel targets? Well, the answer at the top of the game is really, really fast. In many cases, less than two seconds. It's the truest test of pure speed and accuracy. The sport is steel challenge competition. And the best in the world are in Florida to find a champion. John and Mike bring you our coverage. Stand by. There is only one shooting sport that sounds like this. The unmistakable sound of five shots and five hits. A clean run in steel challenge shooting. The challenge here is as simple as stand and shoot four target steel, then the steel stop plate. And your time to do that is your score. And for the top shooters, in some cases, we're talking less than two seconds. There are eight stages that make up the steel challenge. Are you ready? On seven of them, five strings will be shot and the best four times will be kept for score. The eighth stage is outer limits, the only stage with movement and the longest shots in the match. Here, four strings are fired and the best three are kept for score. There are three steel targets that make up the different arrays on the eight courses of fire. The 10 inch round plate, the 12 inch round plate, and the 18 by 24 inch rectangle. But this year there is an important adjustment to the rules. One that will put an even higher premium on accuracy. A notable change to the rules at Steel Challenge this year. No backing up the timer for extra shots on the stop plate. They use sound actuated scoring here, which means the timer records each individual shot and the last shot on the stop plate becomes the shooter's score for the string. Historically, if the shooter could prove an extra shot on the stop plate, the RO would back the timer up. Not anymore. If you shoot it, you own it. In this match one year ago, Max Michelle was able to prove an extra hit on a stop plate, leading to a time savings of 16 hundredths of a second. That will not be possible anymore. The decision to change the rules uh, from stop plate actuated timing to the actual timer without backing the, the shots up as we have in the past, that decision was simply made to make, basically make the match easier to run for the ROs. There's no confusion. They don't have to try to figure out how many shots they need to back up. Um, and also to make sure that this match is run more in line with the club matches all over the country. Rule changes aren't the only new interest at the match this year. Jason Moore is here spearheading what could be another way to boost participation. Jason is running a rim fire conversion on his sporting rifle, potentially a new division at Steel Challenge. What's the idea, shooting, uh, shooting steel challenge with a rifle? It's great, it's cheap, it's fast, uh, I can keep up with the pros, and uh, best of all, it's cheap. More guns in more divisions in the match means success, and so do first time junior shooters. Noah and Blake Balcom are here with their dad, Smith & Wesson pro Trevor Balcom, shooting their first steel challenge. For Blake, signs of improvement begin to show on the stage accelerator. And the same can be said for her older brother. Noah is making his shots count on the very difficult outer limits. And for Noah, this day is about more than just shooting. 
it's fun. I like spending time with my dad, and I love shooting just like he does. So it's it's fun hanging out with him. It was fantastic. They uh, they both did re real well. Um, I think they probably had more clean runs than I did. Uh, it, it, they handled the weapon safely, and they had a good time and met some great people. You can tell by looking, Trevor is one proud father, and congratulations to Blake and Noah on their first steel challenge. Well, it really was neat to see, and he's right. They both shot great as first-timers. But coming next, the big guns take to the stages to find out who's got the stuff to be world champion. There are two matches that make up the Steel Challenge three days of competition. The rim fire match and the two day center fire or main match. And the key difference besides the caliber is that in the center fire match, all strings of fire begin with a draw. Also worth noting are the competitors who shoot the rim fire match and both days of the center fire match in pursuit of the Steel Master title, the best combined score after all three events and only a select few competitors tackle this monumental feat. There are two schools of thought surrounding the Steel Master title. Some feel like the more shooting over the course of three days, the better. But others, like KC Eusebio, shoot only the open division of the main match saving all of the speed for the one-day event. Among the contenders for Steel Master are names like Dave Zavigny and past Steel Challenge champion BJ Norris. And a keen eye will note that BJ is shooting the same limited gun in both center fire divisions after his open gun suffered a breakdown, making his challenge just a bit greater. That's because in the open center fire match, BJ is up against two of the Steel Challenge's most winning open division competitors, Max Michelle and Casey Eusebio. And the chase begins on the stage known as Showdown. The stage Showdown. Now I've got my next level training pistol here to help point out the targets. That 10 inch round plate is at 10 yards and that 18 by 24 inch rectangle is at 25 yards. What's interesting about this stage is there are two shooting boxes and the shooters will choose to shoot two strings from one and three strings from the other. What's interesting about that is it changes the target's display and that will change the shooting order. BJ will lead off and he is starting on the right. Are you ready? Stand by! This is not how he wants to start. His next four runs must now be perfect to be able to make this run his throwaway. His second string from the right side box is more like it. Now he's moving to the left box. Historically, BJ is stronger from the left side box. Let's see if that holds up. Stand by. The final string was just a bit off the pace, but still, five for five, solid shooting from BJ. Solid indeed, but now it's Max Michelle and Showdown is one of his strongest stages. Are you ready? Stand by! Max also chooses to start from the right-hand box. And that's why. 
His first two strings are a great start. So great that Max is shooting a third string from the right. And that was amazing, a 185. In the left box now for string four. Are you ready? Stand by! And that is not what he is looking for, too many extras. Stand by! Max's final string also has a pickup shot, but it's still good enough to take the stage. The stage pendulum, two 12-inch targets and two 10-inch targets set at 18 yards. The 12-inchers are on a six-foot post and the 10-inchers are on a five-foot post. So the shooter will move in a bit of an arc as they swing across the bank of targets. And you will notice right away that the shot cadence is just a little Stay more by. measured than on the other stages. even when the shots are coming from one of the quickest guns in the game. Casey Eusebio is letting Max and everyone else know he's still in this match. Even with a few pickup shots. Casey puts together the best four strings for the match. and is the only shooter under 11 seconds total on the stage. It's starting to look like a two horse race between Max Michelle and Casey Eusebio for the title. And in the past, when these two are hooking up on the stages, the scores have been phenomenal. That's true, these two former teammates have a history of pushing each other in this match. But like in all racing, there's a fine line between glory and disaster. After the break, we'll find out if they can hold it together through the final stages of the match. That's next. For the rugged, the style, the untamed, and the wild. For the trades, the trees, the mountains, and the free. Reimagined. Reengineered. Reborn. The Super Squad is about to face one of the fastest stages in the Steel Challenge, Smoke and Hope. The target steel are all 18 by 24 inch rectangles and they're close, only 7 and 9 yards. The 12 inch stop plate is right down the middle at 14 yards and competitive 5 for 5 strings here will be well under 2 seconds. The key to shooting a match-winning string is to shoot accurately. You will never outrun a miss. But the next best thing to a clean 5 for 5 string is a fast pickup. And Max Michelle is one of the best at it. After his blinding first string, Max doesn't hook up 5 for 5 again. Even so, he is the fastest in the squad on the stage. And he is continuing to add to his lead going forward in the match. Next up for the squad is another lightning quick stage known as Roundabout. And this one is one of Max's favorites. This is Max Michelle at his best. Accurate five for five strings all coming in under two seconds. And his best for a total 7.51 seconds. Casey Eusebio is not ready to hand over the title of champion just yet. He is very strong on roundabout. His first two strings are right on pace. String three is not.
So now string four and five must be solid or that three second blunder will be on his scorecard. The final strings are clean, and that's it. Casey's best four totals 7.62 seconds, and Max feels Casey in pursuit. You know, when, and when, you're, when you're chasing someone, it's, you, you get that little bit more drive, determination to go up, and you're not shooting scared. So he shot really, really well here. He wasn't scared. He was coming to get me. So. It may be that bit of pressure that lights Max's fire. Maybe he had it in the tank to spin. Either way, Max wins the next two stages outright. Five to go is a slam dunk. And so is speed option. In both cases, Max puts over a second on the next best shooter. And all they can do is stand back and watch. That late surge gives Max a big cushion going into the final stage of the match, more than four seconds ahead of KC. Outer limits. The two 18 by 24 inch rectangles are set at 35 yards away. These are the longest shots in the match. Also, this is the only stage where shooters move on the clock. Right-handed shooters from the far left box to center and left-handed shooters from the far right box to center. With that great an advantage, all Max has to do is cruise and he will become only the second shooter to claim four World Steel Shooting Championships. These strings are just what he needs. His best three total 13.2. That's enough to claim his fourth title. I just wanted to hit the targets, and that was my goal. And I took that lead and I kept it for the entire day because I know how important and valuable that lead is. You start feeling it slipping and slipping, and next thing you know, this game is very much about momentum. So I wanted to carry that momentum all the way in. Well, like he said, Max Michel pulls off a wire-to-wire -wire run and becomes only the second man in the 30-year-plus history to claim four titles. And our congratulations to B.J. Norris, second place in the open match despite using his limited gun, and B.J. is the Steel Master champion. Jesse Duff is the ladies' Steel Master, taking high honors in both the limited and the open centerfire matches, and setting a new record for the ladies with a total time of 92.72. That's fast. Well, you've made it to the end of another Shooting USA video on YouTube, and for that, we thank you. It does help the channel if you subscribe, like, and comment, and that will help us keep the content coming.